Hey, this is Harold Nixon with HaroldNixon.com. Today I'm going to show you how to get uh, rolling in Cubase 4 here, starting a uh, tracking session from nothing. So first we've got our uh, program open here, and we're going to go to File, New Project, and uh, I I've talked about this in another video tutorial if you've happened to see them, uh, about uh, uh, keeping things clean here. First, well, I'm going to go ahead and start this with a blank slate here. I'm going to choose Empty. And what I meant uh, when I say clean is I'll normally start at uh, trying to organize things within albums and then the songs within the albums. So what I've done here is I've got one already open here. Uh, what I would have done is clicked on my documents, clicked create, and then typed in uh, an album name. So I'll say best of Herald. So that would be the folder there. Then I would, now that I was in that folder, I would click create again to, cho to create a song name. So I would click that. And then I would name it um, Harold Song or whatever the song is. Okay, since I've already got, well, I guess I can go ahead and show you here. Uh, so this would be uh, album. Okay, and then we would have our album, as you see, and then I would uh, create the song within it. Okay, and you see we got it there. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Um, Next thing uh, we'd want to do, since I'm starting from empty, you may already have a, a template set up, and that's totally cool, but since I'm showing you from uh, empty here, I'll go ahead and uh, tell you some of the things you might want to watch for is project, project setup, and uh, setting your sample rates uh, and bit rate to the, or bit format that you would uh, want to use. Uh, that looks good for me. I normally track it uh, 4824. Um, Okay, so the next thing we would do, since we do have a blank project here, is I'm just going to, you could do this in multiple places, but I'm just going to do it uh, right here. You can normally, uh, you can right click and choose add audio track. Another way to do that is uh, go up here to project and then add track and you can say audio track. So you can do that actually in several places. You can also do it on the mixer, uh, add track, audio. So I'm just going to go ahead and right click here. Add audio, and I'm going to make uh, four mono tracks just for kicks here. Okay, and we added those in there, no problem. You can add more if you need. All you have to do is right click again. Uh, you can also add all the other types of tracks uh, that same way. So uh, now we, what we've got to do is patch them. If you don't already have a, a patch template set up, um, the way you get to the patches here is uh, on your mixer, which the hotkey for that, by the way, is F3. Uh, as you can see, I'll toggle it on and off there with the F3 button. So you can show VST Connections, this little doodad here. And um, I've got one of the old uh, uh, 9652 RME uh, hammer falls. Uh, I don't have the DSP mixer on mine. It's about time for an upgrade, but uh, this one's done me well for quite a while. So uh, what I would do is, since I've got these four monos here, uh, I'm on the Inputs tab. I'm going to add Bus, and I'm going to add four mono tracks and then I would patch those how I wanted. I could also name these like uh, if this was bass we'll say and we'll say this was um, guitar and um, oh I don't know you get the picture um, alright so uh, anywho okay so you can hit these little plus signs and it opens it up and it shows it's mono so then uh, if you go over here the device port this, the audio device, tells what the actual sound interface is. Like I say, it's a uh, one of the uh, RME, the Digi 9652s. So uh, you would, uh, the device port here actually tells you what the input is. So right now it's patched uh, on ADAT 3, 4, 5, and 6. And we could click on this and change this to any one we wanted to. Uh, this is 24 light pipe in and out, this interface here in 2SPDIF. So... Um, those look okay for what, uh, what I'm doing here. I'll go ahead and close this. And next thing we would do is, and here's another thing, you can patch several things, multiple places. Whoops. Uh, you can check on the audio channel and get this over here, which, by the way, this here can be toggled on and off with this inspector button here. It's called the track inspector. So uh, normally I just leave it on uh, unless I'm actually just... If I'm, if I'm uh, sitting here engineering myself, normally I'll leave it on. If I'm recording a bunch of other guys, normally I tend to leave it off and watch the multi-track. And I've got a dual screen here, too, so I can set the mixer on the other side. But uh, normally I do the patching uh, right on the 
uh, mixer itself just because I see them all right there. So uh, we've got audio one through four here. I want to choose out of the list. You can see since I already labeled some of them, I could say this was bass, this was guitar, uh, this is drums, we'll say, and I didn't label the last one, which is mono four. You don't have to label them, but you know it makes it handy. So really, that's all there is to uh, getting a project going. Oh, um, one other thing I do want to share with you is uh, if you have auto save enabled. Uh, let's go ahead and check if that's enabled. You can get to that. Uh, by going File, Preferences, and then going to the General uh, option there, and you can check Auto Save. Okay, normally I set that as low as I can go for every 30 seconds so that it automatically does a, uh, uh, a save every 30 seconds. Now, one thing to note about that, we've created this project and we've done everything, we've set it up the way we want it. One thing that you have to do, see we could go ahead and start tracking right now, we could record us some audio, no problem. But the one thing you want to go ahead and do is go ahead and save. You'll notice we've not really saved anything yet. So I've got this in my album which is named the album name and my song named song. So normally I'll name the song, the, the song here the same exactly because it's the same song. But you know, you could always save it again as version 2, version 3 or whatever if you have multiple kinds of mixes. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and hit save. Now you can see we've went from uh, untitled to the actual title of the song. From this point on it will auto save every 30 seconds. Until we just done that there was no auto saves happening. So if we would have sat and tracked for uh, 30 minutes and got things good and and uh, we were just fixing to save and our computer crashed or we had some sort of you know power failure or whatever then uh, we we would be safe if we had already saved but since uh, since we wouldn't have done that tracking for 30 minutes or whatever we would have lost it all but now that we've hit save from the beginning of this and named it uh, you're good to go from now on so that's something I highly recommend um, other little notes um, one thing I get questions about sometimes is the snapping. Snapping on and off, it, uh, uh, they'll try to be editing with the mouse and uh, it jerks from place to place. And uh, people wonder what that is. It's the snapping. You can turn it on and off or you can set uh, to different things here. Like if it's set to an event, that would be like the beginning of an audio region. Or uh, Well, these are fairly self-explanatory. You can look them up in the manual too. But the button you're looking for if your mouse is jumping around and you can't edit the way you want is this one right here, the snapping. So you can turn it off. But um, anyway, that pretty much covers getting you actually rolling from the get-go on a uh, project in Cubase 4. I want to thank you again for watching and be sure to check out uh, HaroldNixon.com. I've got some products up there, but I've also got other instructional videos. And uh, uh, one thing is if you need some any kind of remote support, uh, if you're hung up on something, you don't know uh, what it is and you need a little help, I do have a cross-loop account. And basically what that is, is that lets me remote control your computer and I charge a small fee for that and I normally I'll do uh, uh, I've got thirty dollars but sometimes if it's a little simple problem I don't charge nearly that much so uh, but be sure to check that out at uh, crossloop uh, dot com forward slash Harold Nixon and that can be reached from the link on my webpage as well so thank you for watching and I hope something was helpful there and you all have a good day